Hi, it's Dr. Eric Balkavage, and we're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. Today, I want to continue the discussion from the last two weeks regarding reverse T3. And so there was a question that was asked, does TSH indicate normal reverse T3 levels? Um, a viewer asked their endocrinologist to run their reverse T3. They've been watching a number of the videos. They're still having hypothyroid symptoms, even though they're taking Synthroid and they asked their doctor to run the reverse T3. And the doctor said he didn't need to run reverse T3 because as long as the TSH was normal, that indicated that the cells were getting plenty of T3 and therefore reverse T3 would be normal. But that's not really true. Let's talk about, let's have a little review and we'll talk about what some of these things mean and, and I'll give you a, an explanation of why that's not true. So. TSH represents the T3 levels in the pituitary gland. So how does this work? So when there's stimulation in the body, uh, T4 is converted to T3 by an enzyme called deiodinase 2. In the pituitary gland, the only enzyme that really is present for a conversion of D T4 to T3 is the deiodinase 2. The peripheral tissues have deiodinase 1, they have deiodinase 2, and deiodinase 3. So the pituitary actually acts a little different than the rest of the cells in the body, which is why TSH reflects the saturation of T3 at the pituitary level, but does not represent the T3 saturation at the peripheral cellular level. And we're going to say that that's anywhere away from the pituitary gland. So the peripheral cells act a little bit differently. They do have D2, they have D3, and they have another enzyme called D1. But D3 is the primary hormone that actually, or the primary enzyme that converts T4 to reverse T3. Under situations that drive up D3, the peripheral cells will be impacted. The pituitary gland does not have D3, so it can only make T3. And so if we have situations like calorie restriction or inflammation or insulin resistance or some type of stress response, in the peripheral tissues, D3 may be upregulated. In that case, we're going to make way more reverse T3, and that's going to bind to receptors and it's going to cause hypothyroid symptoms. Because there's no D3 at the pituitary gland under the same circumstances, only D2 is being is produced and T4 can only be converted to reverse T3 or to T3, which is why the pituitary gland can become saturated normalizing or really lowering TSH, the doctor can look at, say, look at their values and say, wow, your TSH is normal or low, therefore the cells of the body must be saturated with T3 and therefore your symptoms can't be as a result of low peripheral thyroid hormone status. But as we've talked about, or as I've talked about on a number of videos, TSH only represents the T3 at the pituitary gland. We now know via research that TSH does not represent the T3 level and the T3 saturation at the peripheral cells. So the doctor was incorrect in, at, in telling the patient that if the TSH is normal, they didn't need to run reverse T3 because it would be normal because TSH does not represent the represent what's happening in the peripheral cells, it only represents what's happening at the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland only has D2 enzyme. There's no enzyme in the pituitary gland to convert T4 to reverse T3 to compete with T3. So the pituitary gland was, would be looking normal. The reason they still have hypothyroid symptoms is because of the stress response on the body, the T4 synthroid that they're getting isn't being converted to T3 in the same, it's being converted to reverse T3 in much greater concentrations. Interesting, when, when I ran a thyroid panel on this patient, her reverse T3 was greater than 24. 24 is the lab high. So in this situation, the patient's reverse T3 was greater than 24, is actually in the 30s. So this person was really over converting that synthroid to reverse T3. That reverse T3 was blocking the peripheral cell T3 receptors. So even if they were making some T3, it couldn't get into the receptor to stimulate metabolism, 
which is why they still had hypothyroid symptoms. So if you're taking Synthroid and you still have symptoms or Levothyroxide and you still have hypothyroid symptoms, really work with your doctor or your endocrinologist to get a reverse T3 done. If your endocrinologist won't do it, you call an office like mine and we can, we'll almost always run a comprehensive thyroid panel because we want to take a look at what that reverse T3 values are. Now, can you just take the reverse T3 as the value only? No, because somebody may still have normal amounts of reverse T3, but it's not just about how much T3 they make, it's about the T3 to reverse T3 ratio. If that ratio is less than 10, then the person has cellular hypothyroidism. They're, they're making more reverse T3, more reverse T3 in relation to T3. The other value we can look at is the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio. If that is less than 0.2, then the person has cellular or peripheral hypothyroidism. Remember, Hypothyroid symptoms don't occur because the gland isn't necessarily making T4 and T3. Hypothyroid symptoms occur because the peripheral tissues aren't getting enough T3. And one of the reasons they may not get enough T3 is because of the stress responsors on the body. The body's using D3 to convert T4 to reverse T3 in the peripheral cells. The pituitary gland, which is what the doctor's looking at with just the TSH, does not have D3 to make any reverse T3. So of course, T4 under D2 only will be converted to T3. It will saturate the pituitary gland, telling the brain, hey, we don't need TSH, so we're gonna, we don't need any more T4, so we're gonna lower TSH, okay? So hopefully that helps. Look forward to another Thyroid Thursday edition next week. Take care.